This is a talk about significant figures, how to count them, how to do multiplication and division and present your answer with the correct number of significant figures, how to do addition and subtraction and present your answer with the correct number of significant figures. So counting significant figures. We're going to divide numbers into two categories, decimal numbers and numbers that are written in proper scientific notation. When a number is written in proper scientific notation, as these examples are, you always have a non-zero digit before the decimal place. And the number of significant figures are going to be determined by the figures that are written down. So in the first example, we have, what do you think? If you said three, good. The eight, the zero, and the seven are significant. In the second case, if you said six, you're correct. These two zeros are counted. If we didn't measure them, we would not have written them here. And this last one, what do you think? Seven. Okay, so counting the number of significant figures using scientific notation is very easy to do. The times 10 to whatever power is not involved in this count, only the part of the scientific notation involving the numerals that come before the multiplier. And you just count them. So easy enough. Counting significant figures when numbers are written into decimal form is a little more difficult. Let's look at a few examples. Okay, in these examples, the problem is all about zero. In the decimal system, zero serves two purposes. One purpose is to indicate a zero in a measurement. Like you actually put the ruler down and measured a zero somewhere. The other way that zero is used in decimal is to indicate magnitude, because in the decimal notation, the column matters. The number 76 does not equal the number 760,000. These are completely different numbers. We know this because we've learned to interpret the columns with meaning the ones column, the tens column, the hundreds of thousands and so on. Now here we have what are known as trailing zeros to the left of the decimal point. So we don't even see a decimal point here, but we presume that it's at the end of the number. So these kinds of zeros in this first number are called trailing. because they come after these non-zero digits. Here, we have what are known as leading, leading zeros. 
So leading zeros are zeros that come before the first non-zero numeral. And finally, we have zeros that are in between two non-zero numbers like this one. So this is just in between. And finally, we have trailing zeros, which are to the right of the decimal point. So this is also a trailing zero, but this trailing zero and these trailing zeros are not the same kind of trailing zeros. These trailing zeros are to the left of the decimal point, and this trailing zero is to the right of the decimal point. Okay, so how do we count significant figures? Well, for this first example, and let me erase this because it's not part of the example, it's just making a point. So for this first example, the correct number of significant figures is two. Let me show you why. If we convert this first number to scientific notation, we would write 7.6 times 10 to the fifth. And all those trailing zeros would no longer be needed. We don't know if they're there because they're moving the seven and the six to the proper column, or they're there because they were actually measured. So to be clear, we're gonna err on the side of caution and we're gonna drop them off when we write scientific notation. So the correct number of significant digits in this number is two. Next example. Leading zeros don't count. So this has one, two, three, four, five significant digits. Again, how can I demonstrate that? By converting it to scientific notation. So when we convert this to scientific notation, all leading zeros are no longer needed because magnitude is handled by the power of 10. In the case of zeros, which are in between two non-zero digits, they are always going to count. And trailing zeros that are to the right of the decimal point are also always going to count. So when we convert this number to scientific notation, we would write it as 7.2080 times 10 to the one power. So why does a trailing zero count here and it doesn't count here? Well, the reason why it counts here is because we don't need it. If we erased it, this would still be 72. If we put it back, this is still 72. So removing this zero does not change the meaning of the numbers. So if it's there, it must have been written down because it was a measurement. Because if it wasn't a measurement, there was no need to write it. So that's why those trailing zeros count. Again, why do these not count? Because when we remove a zero, we completely change this number. This is now 76,000. This is now 7,600. So we have to leave those zeros there, whether we measured them or not, just to give the proper meaning to the seven and the six. This is why scientists prefer scientific notation because it is not ambiguous. So this number here, one, two, three, four, five significant figures, okay? So those are the rules for counting significant figures. Now, where do we encounter numbers where significant figures matter? Well, significant figures matter whenever there's a measurement. They do not matter when there's an exact count. So if I make a square here and then I put some dots in it, and I say, how many dots are in this square? You would answer five. That is not a measurement. I counted them, one, two, three, four, five. So this is considered an exact number. There is no uncertainty in this number.
However, measurements do have uncertainty. If I were to have a balance and put an object on it and weigh it and come up with 31.3 grams, even a little bit of wind or a fingerprint or some rolling about could perhaps change this to 31.4 or 31.2. And the fact that we do not always get exactly, exactly the same number suggests that this has some uncertainty. We just don't know if this is this last digit is precisely a three or a four or a two. Sometimes we can indicate this by writing plus or minus 0 0.1 gram. This is another way of indicating uncertainty. When you make a measurement with an instrument, you, you write down the data to the whatever value has the uncertainty in it. So the 31 is not uncertain. That's not going to change. With this particular balance, it can measure the number of grams very accurately. But its last digit of measurement is the one where we have the uncertainty. And by the way, three significant figures, three significant figures, three significant figures. OK. So we encounter significant figures when we're dealing with data. And when you have data, you often have to make calculations. So an example of that would be density is mass divided by volume. So imagine that I, I had an object and I determined its mass and it was 63.472 grams. So I had a really expensive balance because it was able to measure to the nearest thousands place plus or minus 0 0.001. And suppose I had a volume that I determined in a graduated cylinder that was 5.2 milliliters. Well, now we have a problem because this top number has five significant figures and the number here and the denominator has only two significant figures. So when we report our answer, it's only as good as whichever piece of data has the fewest number of significant figures. So if you grab your calculator and do this calculation, I end up with 12.206 grams per milliliter. However, we have a problem. Because of the uncertainty in the volume, this number could be quite different. For example, what if this had been 5.3 milliliters? So do the division again, only this time divide by 5.3. So I get 11.97, well, 5, 8, 4, 9, 0, 6. My calculator is very generous to provide me with digits. But here's the interesting thing. There is a discrepancy in the tens place. Now, if we round, that discrepancy goes away and 11.9 becomes 12. But we don't have any kind of agreement past that. So this is showing you that even if, if there's five significant figures in one of the measurements, if the other measurement has uncertainty in only the second significant figure, then the answer is really only good to two significant figures. 
So this answer would be reported as 12 grams per milliliter with only two significant figures. So what is the rule? The rule simply says that you count the significant figures in each piece of data, and then you round your answer to the fewest number of significant figures. And we do this for multiplication and division. Okay. All right. That leaves us with only one last topic. How do we handle significant figures when we add and subtract? Well, when you multiply and divide, the uncertainty multiplies. But when you add and subtract, the uncertainty only adds. So let's look at a few uh, numbers here. Let's say we have 32.075, and we're going to add that to 0 0.026. And we're going to add that to 112 point, um, one, one, nine. So if we count the significant figures, this would be five, this would be two, and this would be six. But counting significant figures does not help us when we add. It's not going to be that useful. Instead, what's important to understand is that the uncertainty of all of these numbers, all of these numbers is occurring in the thousands place. So when we add them up, the uncertainty will still be in the thousands place. So 5 and 6, 11, plus 9, 20, 2, 4, 5, and 7, 2, 4. Hopefully I haven't made any errors. And so when we add this up, we get this number with six significant figures. And this is the correct answer to report because the uncertainty is carried down along this column in the thousands place. Now let's look at another example. Okay, so we're going to add these numbers. Now, this number has four significant figures, this number has five, and this number has four again. But that's not what's going to determine the number of significant figures in the final answer. The way we do this is first we just add. So nine, eight, one, two, point. Three, six, three. Okay, so we add it up. Then we find whichever number has the uncertainty in the largest value column. So in this case, it's the tenths place. This one it goes to the hundreds, this one goes to the ten thousands. So this is the least precise number. And so we draw a little dotted line here. And we can only accept the numbers that match the significance of the piece of data that has the least precision. So this final answer would have four significant figures. So is it possible through adding to increase the number of significant figures? Well, yeah, sure. Suppose we were adding 32 uh, to, um, oh, to 7,680. Well, that's 85. We'll do it like that. Okay, so we add these two numbers up. And this, this number here has only two significant figures. This has four. But our final answer has four significant figures. And that makes perfect sense in addition, because 32 is measured to the nearest ones place. 7,685 is measured to the nearest ones place. 
So our final answer, 7,717, is also measured to the nearest, or calculated, I should say, to the nearest one's place. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that the rules are the same for addition and subtraction versus multiplication and division. Now to handle uncertainty in higher order operations, like uh, taking exponentials or doing, um, what else would I, would, would be an example? Doing some kind of, well, well, the main one is exponentials. I'm just trying to think if there's something else, but when we, when we do those sorts of calculations, it gets much more complicated. So we're not gonna worry about those for this course. We're gonna stick to calculating significant figures when we add, when we subtract, when we multiply, and when we divide. So just to summarize those rules, this rule says to count all data items, significant figures, and round to the smallest number, smallest number of significant figures. That's the rule for multiplication and division. Here, um, the rule is to consider the precision of each data point to consider the precision of each data point and then round to least precise place. So what happens when you have a mixed operation? What happens when you have to multiply and divide and then you have to add and subtract? Like, what do you do in those situations? So we'll do one example like that. So suppose we had to multiply 32.0 times 0 0.00658, you had to multiply that. And then we had to add something on. Now, let me just see. I'm going to do that calculation so I have an idea what would be a good number to try to add on. So Okay, and so suppose we're going to add on um, 3.7 to this. So how do we do this calculation? Well, you have to consider order of operations. So the multiplication is first. So we do that first. And the result from this is 0 0.2105. Five, six. How many significant figures are we allowed to keep here? Well, this number has three and this number has three. So we're allowed to keep three. So the answer here would be 0 0.211. You see the five would cause us to round up. Now we're gonna add that to 3.7. And when we add these, we get this number. So we are only allowed to keep to the nearest tenths place because this is addition. So our final answer would be 3.9. Our final answer would be 3.9. We would not be able to keep the one and the one here because we only have to the nearest tenths place in this addition. So that's how you handle mixed operations. I hope this was useful.